Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I think it's time to try to fit this engine in the truck. Maybe the tape measure's wrong, and across those headers, it actually will fit between the frame rails of the, of the old pickup truck, but I doubt it. But we're gonna try anyway, because, you know, otherwise I gotta pull off this header, which I don't wanna do. So let's see if we can't get this thing in the truck. I'm excited, it's gonna look good. We're getting really close, super close. So I got the bell housing, clutch, pressure plate, all that stuff attached to the engine. Got the plug wires on, didn't show any of that, right? That's pretty straightforward. Although I did use ceramic boots, the cheapest ones that Amazon had, because I didn't want to, you know, burn, burn the boots with the headers. And also a nice viewer sent me these uh, header protector, no, plug wire protector wraps, right? And then I wrapped my wire with this half inch uh, flame resistant uh, protection as well. Also used a piece of uh, oil jug to kind of maintain my wires at the back of the head and ran them under the headers because I think they look better than just wires dangling over, over the top of the engine. So I'll wait to put the distributor in because it'll hit the firewall I'm sure. So there we go. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Also, made this bracket as well. Quick bracket to mount my uh, power stern pump because I didn't have the original. So, there we go. Looks pretty good. Let's see if we can't jam this thing in the truck. These headers are definitely not gonna fit. I'll be amazed if they do. Definitely not gonna fit. There's no way. There's no way, not without the motor mounts off of there. If I had one of them fancy engine adjuster rigs that mount onto the, uh, to the hoist, I could tilt it like that and then get it in there, maybe. Yeah. I'm gonna, I think I can get it in if I remove those engine mounts and then I think it will snake down in there. How about now? It's gonna hit that brake booster. It already is. Tall valve covers and big headers. What do we do now? Possibly, possibly a twist. Oh, maybe. Oh, it's going. Cover clear that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It fit. Try it this way. So 
You don't have to get these cups over top of that mount. We'll just slide it in there with a the flat bottom. If we can get our bolt holes lined up, that's the main thing. Oh. Almost fits like it was made for it. It's going to work. Definitely going to work. Very, very exciting. All right, so jack under the back to level it out, because without that, if I let off of this hoist, it'll just, there's no cross member or transmission holding up the back end of it. So now all of these bolts are in, motor mount wise, and now I just gotta get these three in. Hmm, that's quite a ways off. Is it? It is. Like yeah, maybe so. It's no? Optical yeah, optical delusion. Well, just about got this motor in here, and my good buddy Al showed up. So now he gets help. <laughs> All right, so yeah, jack it up just a little bit, and then I'll pull out this a little more. My buddy Al drove down all the way from Minnesota just to operate that jack for me. I know you needed the extra set of hands, and I was only one of I'm confident in your confidence. I think I'm I think I'm confident that it will go right in. Now let it down. All right. Oh. Can you maybe? Well, man, it's so close. Rock it. Uh, okay. Not no, let me get a bar because I don't want my fingers in there. No, I think it's trying to go. So, yeah. Yeah, it's going. Yep. There it's going. That's that it. Here we go, Al. <laughs> One motor attached. Line it up right at the back. Get to see where it needs to go. I spy with my two little eyes. Yeah, it's good. Super close. Oh yeah, yeah. Boom. Sounded way better. Done. Way better. All right, sir. Ugh. Okay. Can you hand me that wrench? I can get this one down here. I can see both. It's really easy. Oh, thank you, sir. On the other side? Yep. Less of it. Less hair to blow in the breeze? Yes, that's been, I've noticed that the last couple of years. <laughs> I, I don't quite understand that whole thing. It's, uh, it's not really, I, I don't find it acceptable at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. No one asked me. If they would have, I would have said, no, thank you. I'll I'll, I want to keep my hair? I just keep my hair. Yeah. Just for another 30 or 40 years. <laughs> to your dad. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good timing. Ready? Yep. 
It's a heavy duty truck transmission. That's no, this is not a Porsche transmission, nor is it a fast shifting transmission. That is a that is a job site truck. You're happy that it's got synchros. Yes. Uh, that thing, uh, a speed shift on this thing is like three seconds. Uh, yeah, that's a speed shift. Yep. Well, I suppose the two of us can just pick Let's it up. Let's see. Jesus. It's kind of heavy, but we're good and strong and muscular, so. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> I tell myself that, at least. <laughs> so the question now is, though, is... I'll just, Elevation. Yeah, I'll set it on the jack and Put just jack deck. it up into position. That's Put the plan. Oh, uh, yeah. I'll hold this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's kind of close, but not exactly. There you go. All right. Put those two ends together. Okay. Pull the slack out of it. So if you've ever Shut installed off. one of these NP205 transfer cases, you know that they're heavy. They came in Fords, Dodges, Chevrolets, cast iron, gear driven. They're a nice transfer case as far as their their strength, but man, they're awkward, off balance, and dangerous. I've put them in in gravel driveways with floor jacks and done it completely by myself because I had to, right? Got to get to work the next day. Not fun. Not fun at all. But we got this one in. Uh, Al's idea was pretty pretty bright. Wrapped a uh, ratchet strap around the, the end of this thing and then ran it through the shifter hole in the floorboard supported by a block of wood. So it was impossible almost for this thing almost impossible for this thing to fall which is a good thing when you know you're under it here that did it. Yeah. Now we need to let down the jack just a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I'm pushing in on it. So. Right. So anyway, let's move it. Move it. No. 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 Yeah, it's moving. Okay. Keep going. Same way. Oh. A little more. Oh. Oh. A little more. Okay, that's it. What a pain in the butt. Move the bolts, right? Yeah. Right. Let me. Don't you push it in, okay? Uh, as long as it's lined up, that's the thing. 
Uh, what hoopty clamps? Oh, no, I gotta put the cross member in first. Because oh. that's the only thing that holds the weight of the back of the motor and all this. All right. I mean, but you still need the guys to put on the back of these guys. Huh? These guys. Oh, they're on the transfer case. There's one. We're not leaving this garage until this is hooked up. <laughs> Beautiful. Go get Chloe. Oh. Come on, Chloe. Chloe, come on. Come on, Chloe. Get her, Bobby. Get her. Get her. Get it, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> he drop kicked her. You ready? You ready? Go get it. It's like Ready? Ready? Is it your plan, Mom? I take it to Chloe. So I picked up a new tool for the home and shop, and this is a Predator 4400 4.2 gallon a minute pressure washer. Now, I got this thing for a couple different reasons. One, my old electric pressure washer was absolute garbage and I went to use it the other day and it immediately failed, right? Like they always do. So went to Harbor Freight, me and my buddy Al, and we picked up this Predator 4400 PSI 2.2 gallons per minute pressure washer, gas powered. And I'm hoping that this will both take care of my cleaning needs around the house and the shop and also take care of a little special purpose that I have for this thing that I'll show you here shortly. Uh, got some plans. So let's open it together. Haven't got it out of the box yet and get a look at it, see what we get. So I looked at the display unit in the store and it's a pretty nice looking piece of equipment for, for what you pay for it anyway. So I'm hoping that this thing will perform good as well. So there is a little bit of assembly required. Top handle, spray nozzles. Looks like a hanger for the wand. There is the metal wand itself. Yeah. 
constantly loose and rattle. Oh. But it is easy to disassemble things with these types of mechanisms. But the funny thing is, how often do you actually disassemble? Never. There's that. It's not well, that's too nice. bad. That's, that's less rattly than mine is, but it's brand new. Yeah. Really impressive little unit. Yeah, I'm kind of quite surprised actually. Pretty all pretty heavy duty stuff. Yeah, it's really not. Not as cheesy crap. as one would think. <laughs> it's not crap actually, which is. I mean, it's not an expensive, but it's still it's, it's not crap. So right. It looks to be a very good value proposition. Yeah. And that's all for it. So right off the bat, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. It comes with solid tires so you never have to worry about those going flat now, i don't know if this thing runs or not so i'm not trying to fluff it up too much but i'm pretty impressed with the quality of the build so far this thing also came with a bag full of carburetor jets so if you're at different elevations you can change those to get it in tune also come with a what four uh, carburetor bowl gaskets so if you do have to change the carburetor jets you don't risk a, a leak there and on the manual first page gives you Pressure washer, pump specifications, oil type, capacity, flow, everything. Engine specifications gives you the displacement, which is obviously 420 cc's. The cooling system type, the fuel type and capacity, engine oil type and capacity. Run time at 50% load, which is two hours. Bore and stroke, I can't believe they give you that information. Compression ratio direction of rotation, spark plug type and gap, and valve clearance on the intake and exhaust. So that's impressive that they give that information in a manual. This thing even came with a funnel, which is, I don't know, it's a cheap accessory, but still nice, right? So the air filter on this thing it comes with a pre-filter. I like to put a few drops of oil on this foam filter and you know knead it in real good. Just seems to help collect the dust a little better. Makes the dust actually stick to the foam instead of getting past it. So it came with a pretty nice looking stainless steel braided coated obviously 50 foot hose and the wand Pretty, pretty heavy duty as well. Of course, it's probably going to be uh, being such a high pressure unit. It's also adjustable pressure output, so you can you know regulate that if you need to be a little more gentle. Right? It's a pretty impressive unit, I think. So here's the plan. This thing hasn't been started. I, I don't know that it runs. It should. One would hope it is new. So picked up a new fuel can. We'll put some fuel in this thing, see if it'll fire up. And really the whole purpose, or at least one large purpose for buying this pressure washer is because it's so strong, 4,400 PSI. And I'm really hoping that it will work you know, in conjunction with this piece right here. Super cheap, off Amazon. And what it does is turn a pressure washer like this into a sandblaster. So I've been using a small soda blaster, just air-powered sandblaster that's really caused me a a ton of headache. Uh, you spend more time shaking the vessel to get it to pull sand than you do actually get the sandblast and then it only works half the time. So I'm hoping that this will work better. These are super cheap and supposedly they get pretty good reviews. So let's get some fuel in this thing, see if it'll fire up and then we'll see if it works as a sandblaster. So we got our super safe no spill fuel jug here that everybody loves and we we're going to dump some fuel in this thing. <laughs> yeah. Designed to not spill fuel, but absolutely spills fuel everywhere. Gets it all over your hands and does exactly what it's not supposed to do. And that's spill fuel. <laughs> How does that even work? Oh, that works. 
Oh. Yep. Oh. Yep. Spills fuel everywhere. Just as suspected. Yeah. Want a better idea? Yeah. Easy pour replacement spout and rim. Yeah, let me try this. So not only does this spill fuel everywhere, it also gets it all over your hands, which you don't want. And this piece in here, I guess is for fire suppression. And uh, when we were filling this jug, the pump kept kicking off because it, uh, I don't know, this thing was just interfering with the way that the pump, the pump would fill up the uh, jug. So, no need for this thing. Much preferred. And now, we'll put a vent in the back. It's pretty nice, actually. Half inch hole. Boom. So this little end has a screw on cap with a rubber seal in it, which is nice. And now we get a vent. So we should be able to fill this thing up without spilling much and fill it much quicker, which is nice. If they'd have just left gas jugs alone, I think we'd all been better off. And they'd been probably less spillage. That works awesome. So much easier. Yeah, that is nice. There we go. Full, and that's much nicer. All right, let's see. Fuel's on, on switch, and choked. Wow. Run. Man, that's tough to pull. Okay, I struggled there, but it was just because I didn't know what I was doing. Choke and run, so put that on run. Man, that thing is serious. That is, is serious. Wow. Serious. Serious. Yeah, and that wasn't even 100% up. Right. Now I wonder how it'll work as a sandblaster. Works great as a pressure washer. Excellent.
probably should have just stabbed that through this thing. Yeah. The thing works pretty good. It's hard on sand, but yeah. it works good. Yeah. Yep. Well, considering it's throwing four, four gallons a minute. Yeah, but it's at least it's not clogging. At all. Yeah, and it's picking it up good. Yeah, it's sucking it real well. I was hoping, I was concerned it's going to get stuck in the bottom of the bag and hit the bottom and not pick anything up. So let's sum this up pretty quick. So far, this thing's pretty awesome crazy powerful and uh, I'm pretty impressed with the way that that sandblaster works as well and that for the money I don't think you can beat that $25 $30 little attachment I don't think that I'd try to use it with something that had more than or less than half of this uh, 4400 psi it'd probably take forever and it definitely likes the sand and I think I mentioned what I'm using is just play sand sand for a sandbox for kids so it's not not necessarily designed for sandblasting it's not got the right texture but you put enough pressure behind marshmallows and they'll blast off paint so so far i'm pretty happy with this thing hopefully it continues to work well you could shoot marshmallows out of that thing al and it would probably take the paint off that would be amazing steve i would stand to watch that with happiness and glee all right guys that's it this week that's all i have time for anyway it's looking like springs here, which is a welcome change, I'll have to say. So we got our engine in, transmission in, transfer case in. I got all the shifters in, adjusted all the linkages that are you know, associated with them. Got the clutch linkage hooked up and adjusted. Got the front drive shaft in. Did quite a bit of engine wiring, which I did not show. Just, you know, simple stuff. It won't be long we'll have that thing to, um, to where we can fire it up. We still got to do the exhaust, obviously, and take care of the fuel system. But pretty much, you know, the engine's in. So still got a lot of sandblasting to do, which is why I picked up that little, um, you know, cheap unit. Got to do the wheels, got to finish the radiator support, um, and a few odds and ends underneath the bed of this pickup truck. So, you know, that was a really nice piece of kit for cheap and so much nicer than dry sandblasting. I've done a lot of sandblasting in my life. That's the first time I'd ever wet sandblasted, and it was far more pleasant than you know getting a rain of sand on you constantly from a dry sandblaster not that you don't get sand on you when you're wet sandblasting but it's not as bad at least it doesn't seem that way so that's it thanks for watching viewers patrons subscribers anybody who's helped me out whatsoever big thanks to my buddy al appreciate him coming down and you know spending a day or so to help me out and that's it so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time your eyes hold on to your dream oh i know you wanna scream
Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own, waiting for the sun to blossom, hoping to break through.